welcome back to Bagaish land so following on straight after the second video second video uh, where we just finished feeding the animals um, and I've brought the 724 over to the wood mill to uh, show you the problem that I mentioned in that where um, these wood beams are 500 litres and the uh, the plant stops when it's made 1500 litres of them which is a bit annoying um, I have increased the capacity of those to a thousand each so that it will run for a bit longer but we need to clear those out of the way so that it can make the new ones um, so I brought the fence over to do that I was debating buying a tractor to leave over here but I don't think we have the spare funds at the moment for that now, I needed to bring the fence out of the forest anyway because we're going to be using it for today's job which is to harvest the carrots um, this series is going to be a time lapse series I just kind of liked filming the little intro at the start of the videos um, so I thought I'd do that again on this one and so these uh, wood beams go over here and get wrapped uh, and we can then sell them so if we look in the price listing uh, all the way over here uh, I think we need to sell them wrapped anyway they're worth a reasonable amount 700 per thousand liters and then we've got the empty pallets and the pallet boards so uh, the other products that come out of the sawmill are the bulk mark bark mulch which we can sell which is piling up there the wood chips which we need for bedding so we're going to need to bring over a bucket and a trailer and then these uh, boards which get made into pallets so I'm hoping that this opens up enough and that we can get this on the pallet forks uh, which we don't seem to be able to do so we're going to try and pick it up from the end super smooth and yeah, so these go over here and if we get close enough so we produce pallets from here but hopefully now that is going to run for long enough to make us a decent amount of wood chips but if I open up the global company menu um, we got stuck at about 1400 litres so we should get at least a four and a half thousand litres before it gets stuck again so I'm going to head back over to the main farm and uh, I'll be back then and we'll set up for carrot harvesting so the other slightly annoying thing that I have found out and I did that in some testing before I started recording was that the root crop harvester that I have for the carrots potatoes and onions needs a topper um, when I was reading the description of the mod it didn't look like it needed a topper which is why I picked it but we need a topper um, so we're off to the store to uh, buy a topper yeah. which is part of what I said about not being able to afford to buy another tractor to leave up at the uh, sawmill because this is a, an expense that I wasn't expecting to have and to be honest if I'd realized when I was setting up I'd have probably bought them all before I started the game but oh well um, yeah because it doesn't, doesn't say it needs topper I guess those don't either so and they do so we're going to get the grimy carrot topper that's included with the map uh, so we're going to need to run the carrot topper around the field first and then we're going to need to run the harvest around and we're going to need to cart so we're going to need to have a lot of kit working today and that's not where you pick the uh, topper up from if I told you that the testing that I did was actually the first time me recording this video and I wanted to redo it so it was a little bit slicker um, yeah that's going well isn't it I also wanted to do this kind of voiceover intro um, whereas I just jumped straight into the time lapse before but I quite like doing the voiceover first. Uh, it sets the scene for, for what the plan is for the for the day. Um, 
the other plan that I have, which I will sort when we get back to the farm, is I want to run on times three time. Um, I've done a lot in the last few series where I've just adjusted the time to be whatever I needed it to be to get the job done that I wanted to do, but I'm going to try playing on a constant times three for a couple of reasons. One, it will stop me spending forever making a video in a day um, because I try and I like to generally put a day in a video and so if I play on times one I can just do as much as I want um, which is bad for me and makes the progress a little bit unrealistic so we're going to play on times three times five I find just slightly too quick with having a lot of animals we don't have a huge number of animals but having three lots of animals to deal with I think times five is just too fast to uh get animals done and be able to uh, do that at quite a relaxed pace which is what I prefer um, so we're going to go over to the carrot field and get this running on course plate um, the friend I'm trying to think about which way around this oh, the other cool thing is the hay is ready to dry is dry so we need to get that bailed as well um, um, I spotted that tree that's falling over over there which I think is on our land I want to tackle that eventually um, and I haven't turned on the fine time scale adjust so I'll do that when I uh, the next time I save but if we go into course plate and course generation and we want build 44 we're going to do a whole load of headlands just so we have plenty of room for getting stuff done we need islands on because there is a big island in the middle to increase the overlap a lot um, because I don't want to do smooth turns hopefully that will minimize the amount that doesn't get uh, dealt with by the topper we'll go first waypoint and we'll do drive course and that is so that's going. I'm going to have to leave that to run for a bit so that it can create some space. Uh, I'm going to drop the front loader off of the vent. I'll put it in this shed over here. And we'll get the carrot harvester out. That what we're actually going to do is just drop the grapple off the front because realistically you would not probably just be ditching the uh, front loader so quickly so we're just going to stick it right up high so it's out of the way we'll drop the weight there but we need to move the uh, line spreader out of the way probably going to use the Deutz cart which is maybe overkill but that's the only other half sensible size tractor we have for carting we can maybe use the 300 on one of the small trailers it's an option I guess Paris is one of those props that yields a huge amount so I don't actually wanted to use our slightly bigger trailer weight on the way out. The other thing I have to remember is this has a steering axle which means it turns tighter than I expect. Nine the fence. JCB is just coming around for its first run complete and I think at this point we will uh, go into the time lapse that's a long enough intro I think so the plan for today harvest the carrots I need to work out how much we need to keep and then also hopefully get hay baled I would like to if we can get a square baler so uh, that's something I need to look at next time I save as well because I think this is going to be a long job so I'm probably won't do it in one sitting anyway uh, stick some music on hope you stick around for the rest of the video 
I'll be doing a commentary voiceover anyway, um, so my, I will be back for you in a few seconds, but I will be back doing this in a day, maybe. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, folks. Catch you later. Okay, let's get stuck into harvesting these carrots. Um, yes, different video format that I want to try. So mixing a more traditional video with time lapse. Basically because I, the, it's, it works well actually for the way I get time to record videos. Um, I'm going over to grab the Deutz and then I remember that I actually have the little farm tech trader which would be perfect on the Fent 300. Um, so we're going to run that at the start just to get the field opened up a little bit. I had completely forgotten how much work it is harvesting carrots with something like this. It's like 1.8 metre head, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm actually surprised that I endured and got through all of it, to be fair. There was a reason that I used the that little KSB6 uh, four strip root crop harvester a lot, because it's got a three metre header and uh, it just makes things much quicker. You don't have to use a topper either. So we're going to get round to sorting the hay out as well today. We'll do that later on in the video, just waiting for uh, waiting for some of the moisture to dry off a little bit. You know, kind of you know realism role play type of thing. So we're making some progress with the carrots. I played about with getting coarse plate to run the harvester because it was taking quite a while and it didn't really work very well. Um, it was struggling with the turns with the fence so close to the field so i'm back driving um, but that explains the kind of random stripes around the field actually what i found that works best um, which we'll see coming up shortly is opening up a section in the middle of the field and then working out actually like i would do with a combine normally in fact here um, that seemed to work really well in the end, and I kind of wish I'd done that from the start. I was just trying to avoid driving over the uh, topped carrots, but it doesn't have any effect in game. I guess it would in real life, but uh, yeah. So this this actually worked really well, and I got into quite a good rhythm. One of the other problems with trying to use this harvester on course plate is that you you have to turn the harvester off to unload to lift up the hopper, and course plate wasn't always switching the harvester back on and was just driving around the field having fun. As with the barley, oats, the barley, it was barley that we harvested last time, I think. Um, no, nothing's been done to this field, so it's not been fertilized, it's not been scanned, it's not been limed. So uh, that's why the yield map is looking pretty awful down in the bottom left hand corner, but we'll, uh, yeah. We get a decent yield off here. So, taking a quick break to buy a baler, um, a crone baler from. It's on Mod Hub, but it's linked to the Straw Harvest add-on, so you, you need the twine. Um, buying that because it's only 12 grand and only needs 150 horsepower. Um, well, obviously, we're running it on a 300 horsepower, but it's nine series. But you know. Um, it's a baler that I've not used before, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I stupidly just jump straight into baling and then think, actually, maybe I should windrow this. So we're going to jump in the Ford, and we have a windrower over by the BGA. So we're going to get the, the hay road up first, just to save us a bit of time. It's, it's quite nice using such a, a range of tractors on here and starting a series at a different point and with a different focus. Um, so many, so often I get hooked into, right, we've got, I think on here we've probably got about six or seven grass fields. I've got to mow them all and make all of the hay and silage I can possibly make. Uh, whereas actually this field gives us more than enough hay to take us through probably, certainly all of autumn and winter, if not into, well into spring. Um, so yeah, we uh, it'll give us enough. The rest of the fields can just grow. We need to scan them all and fertilize them and things anyway, which we're going to sort out over the winter. Windrowing done. We're getting to baling now. 
but yeah it's kind of a different pace and it's quite nice uh, i'm hoping to stick with it through the uh, series saying that i do intend if if we've got all the crops harvested and the grass is still grown that we might do a big cut to get some silage in the clamp to get the bga going um, so that we can get some digestive going i need to put all the manure that we've got in there as well but yeah it seems that seems like something that i probably will do um, having just said about not harvesting every single field hey one of the nice things about this bale you get the little bale counter under the, on the hut there so we did 22 bales of hay stick this in the workshop for now i need to get the yard organized really it's probably a job for winter because i've I, I forgot where the bell trailer was um <coughs> excuse me voice is a bit croaky because i'm still getting over this cold that i've got anyway we'll uh we'll get these bales loaded up now it's going to be a couple of trailer loads probably although square bales are easier to handle i can't fit as many on this trailer it would seem and I'm not the best bale stacker in the world, let's be honest. This, this little Ford is a great little load of tractor. Long term, if we uh, if we have the cash, uh, I'd like to get a telehandler. Um, just because it's, it's got, a, they usually have a bit more lift capability than uh, a little tractor like this. And then we'll probably find another job for this to do. So, it, let me know what you think of this kind of hybrid style video of uh, a little bit of an introduction and then uh, switching to a time lapse. I don't think many people produce videos like this, and is that just because people don't like them or just because I've come across a different idea? Who knows? Right, let's get these bales over to the shed and unloaded. I'm curious now because the baler said I'd made 22 bales, but I end up with an odd number. Maybe it's counting the one that's part finished in the baler. That might make sense. So we've got a little supply of food for the animals over the winter. We've got a nice supply of hay and the silage bales are fermenting next to the shed that we made last time. We've got a little bit of sugar beets and potatoes. Um, we've got straw that needs to go over to the horses. Um, and we've got a couple of clover and alfalfa silage bales there. I do need to do a run to the store for mineral probably in the next video. So yeah, the rest of the bales are loaded up and there's this one odd bale which I'm going to put into the cows. Oh, I will have edited out that awful cough that I just did. It's just a cold. I've been tested. So yeah, 20 bales in the shed, ready to keep us going through winter and spring, hopefully. Oh, I'm supposed to be recording a West Texas video after this. I have no idea if I'm going to get through that. <coughs> I'll try and edit out all of the uh, horrible noises that I'm making. So now I need to just finish off the carrots. The times three is working really well. I have found the balance of time to get things done versus me spending too long making a video. So yeah, I'm going to stick with that. See how we go. Next video, I'm going to try and get the canola and I think it's a triticale field or spelt or something like that that we need that we have left harvested. And then we'll see what we need to get done through the back end of autumn for jobs for prepping for next year. I'm going to call that done, not worry about that last little bit. So we'll load up the, uh, the two trailers because they've got quite a fit. But, uh, get these tipped in the yard where I've been storing them and we'll see how many carrots we've actually harvested. So 
So a quick look in precision farming says it's about uh, a quarter of a million liters, which is awesome. Uh, so thanks for watching folks. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will catch you next time.